This is just a short video to introduce you to a couple of responses um, that the respiratory system makes when we start to exercise. So don't forget that a response is different to an adaptation. A response is something that happens in the short term. It's a, a change in physiological function. It's something basically that reverts back to a resting level after we've finished exercising. An adaptation is different. An adaptation is when we have an actual structural change in the body, in some part of the body, that actually looks different um, after a, a, a longer period of exercise. So we're just going to look at two responses that you need to know um, that the respiratory system makes when we start to exercise. And they're both sympathetic nervous system responses. And the first one is an increase in breathing rate. Breathing rate just means number of times you breathe per minute. So in and out, that's one, in and out, it's two, and so on. Um, it's the same, um, sometimes we, we call it respiratory rate. Those are the same things. Breathing rate, respiratory rate, same thing. And on average, uh, for a, a, um, an adult um, human, breathing rate's around about 12 breaths per minute. It might get up to about 15, but somewhere in there, 12, 13, 14, 15 breaths per minute on average at rest. When we exercise, however, that breathing rate can get as high as somewhere around 60 breaths per minute. So there's a huge amount of range. There's a huge increase that can be achieved in breathing rate. You can go up to around about 60, maybe even a little bit higher than that. So from 12 breaths, all the way up to about 60 breaths. Um, and interestingly, it's the same for both males and females. Resting levels are, are about the same, about 12, um, and maximal respiratory rate um, can get up to about the same as well, up to around about 60, maybe a touch more. Um, after exercise, breathing rate obviously starts to come back down towards its resting level. And that's why this is a response rather than an adaptation. We don't want the breathing rate to remain elevated for a, a long period of time. Um, so it comes down eventually. Um, and usually it takes about two hours for the breathing rate to go from, um, from its elevated position, especially if it gets really high, if it does get up to about 60 breaths per minute, it takes a couple of hours to get all the way back down to resting. And that is dependent on your cardiovascular and respiratory, your cardiorespiratory um, fitness. The more fit you are in terms of your cardiorespiratory system, the sooner you will return to resting rates as far as your breathing is concerned. The next response is an increase in tidal volume. So don't forget that tidal volume is the amount of air inhaled per breath. And in a normal adult, and again, makes no difference whether we're talking about males or females, a normal adult tidal volume is approximately 500 millilitres. Um, and that's at rest. This can increase. So, and it does increase during exercise. Uh, and it can increase quite a significant amount. It can increase all the way up to vital capacity. So tidal volume of 500 millilitres can go all the way up to vital capacity and that's a significant increase for both males and females in this instance slightly more on average for males than females so whereas at resting level males and females are about the same 500 mils um, of tidal volume when we push it all the way up to maximum up to vital capacity um, males tend to have on average slightly larger vital capacity than females but the key is when we combine these two responses, because we combine tidal volume and respiratory rate in the idea of minute ventilation. A minute ventilation simply means the total volume of air that is breathed in and out in a minute. Because, uh, and it's, it's worked out by multiplying the respiratory rate by the tidal volume. Tidal volume is the, the total amount of air exchange per breath. And if we're doing that a whole bunch more times, then we're going to exchange more air. So in the example on the screen, let's say, for example, at rest, we have an average male um, whose 
um, tidal volume is 500 millilitres. So half a litre, 0.5 litres. And this average male breathes in and out 15 times in a minute. This is at rest. So we can work out therefore that the minute ventilation, um, 0.5 times by 15, gives us the total number of litres that are exchanged, that are breathed in and out at rest during a minute. And that gives us about seven and a half litres. 0.5 times 15 uh, is seven and a half. So we get about seven and a half litres per minute. Let's say this exact same person um, undergoes maximal exercise or close to maximal exercise. So much so that their tidal volume increases up to about two and a half litres. And at the same time, the number of breaths they take in that minute or in each minute of that exercise goes up to about 50. Now we've got 2.5 litres tidal volume and 50 breaths. Multiply those two together and we've now got 125 litres per minute. And so you can see that there is during exercise a massive increase because we're multiplying tidal volume and respiratory rate together. There is therefore a massive increase in the total volume of air that is exchanged during exercise. That's it for uh, respiratory system responses to exercise. I hope that's been of some help. Thanks for listening.